and welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea. I'm a vegan foodie traveler. This is my second day in London. In this vlog, John, Chris, and I will be showing you some more famous landmarks such as Tower Bridge, exploring Spitalfields Market, indulging in delicious vegan food, and my very first proper afternoon tea experience. After getting our Pratt subscription coffee, we head towards London Bridge. Your bird impression. He whistles like a bird. I'm a bird. Uh, a rocket. <laughs> Look for it. <laughs> As we make our way to Tower Bridge, we're stopping by a couple of photo-worthy spots. The city is adorned with crown decorations since its coronation time. Butler's Wharf features historic warehouses transformed into shops and restaurants, making it a charming photo spot. We are now going to cross Tower Bridge. This is an iconic piece of Victorian engineering known for its unique drawbridge and suspension design that allows tall ships to pass. That's where Spider-Man After crossing Tower Bridge, we pass by what happens to be the oldest church in London, dating back to around the year 675. <laughs> the crap. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh the stairs. The stairs are scary. Oh, careful, careful, don't scare me. What does the crypt mean? Like underground? <gasps> That's the beauty of exploring a city on foot, stumbling upon random buildings that pique our interest and uncovering hidden gems. No. Uh huh. He puts the guts of the building on the outside. Oh, it actually looks so cool. I love that in addition to seeing all these cool places, I also get to learn so many interesting facts from John and Chris. Now we're at Leiden Hall Market, one of the filming locations of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This is a historic market dating back to the 14th century. Visitors get to enjoy the beautiful mix of history and contemporary charm. Whether you're a Harry Potter fan or not, this is a great place to take photos. Then we make our way to Spitalfields Market, a food destination. These cute elephant sculptures are by Gilly and Mark. Each sculpture comes with a QR code to raise awareness regarding wildlife extinction. Spitalfields Market, in a restored Victorian building, is a major market open seven days a week. From multicultural food to handmade crafts, there's something for everyone here. It's so sweet. It is. That's hot. Right next to Spitalfields Market is another street market called Brick Lane, which is the most lively on Sunday. There is an interesting artist here known as the Broccoli Man. I think what sets Brick Lane apart from the other markets is the vibrant street arts. It is a grungy melting pot of creativity, attracting artists, foodies, and visitors seeking a taste of London's dynamic and cosmopolitan vibe. Wow. Oh my god. Oh gosh, that's thick. Look at that. And it's not up to date. So we're here to have John and Chris' favorite Caribbean food from Osu. They love the wild rice box. I'm getting the one with a lot of shawarma style oyster mushroom, crispy roti chips, key lime plum potato salsa, homemade sea moss vegan cheese, and sweet coconut tamarind sauce. Caribbean cuisine often features a mix of savory and sweet flavors, with tropical ingredients like coconut, plantains, and various spices. Ooh, ooh, amazing! <laughs> yeah, first Caribbean food. Yeah, we love those. Mm. Wow, this is unique. Mm. Oh, Taiwanese food! Oh, this place, this is the Sri Lankan place. Amazing stuff. I really like it. Everywhere has vegan, wow. I gotta say, I think London is the most vegan friendly city I've visited oh so far. Having West African and Sri Lankan food. It's the yeah. best feeling to be traveling with friends who share the same love for vegan food. We always get greedy when it comes to ordering food and eat way more than we should. This is okay. To me, this is okay. That one was too good. The first one was too good. Aww. Aww. About 10 minute walk from Spitalfields Market, 
you'll find another cool retail venue called Box Park. As the name suggests, it's constructed from shipping containers. Oh, it smells so good in here. Oh, amazing. Good? Nice and healthy too. We continue to stroll in this area for a bit, then take a little break chilling on the grass like local Londoners with our prep drinks. In the last vlog, I cautioned about pickpockets, and in this one, I have another warning. A gypsy woman tried to force a flower on me, making it seem like a free gift. Fortunately, I didn't accept it, because once you take it, they'll hassle you until you give them money. I believe this advice applies wherever you travel to. If a stranger approaches and tries to give you something for free, it's better to ignore it. Back to King's Cross area, we are going to check out the British Library. Home to an extensive collection of books, manuscripts, and historical documents, it's a haven for scholars and book lovers alike. During our visit, there is a small exhibition on animal rights in Britain. What a perfect timing! I've mentioned it multiple times, but for anyone new to my channel, I am vegan for the animals. In our modern way of life, I believe it's unnecessary to consume or exploit animals to lead a fulfilling life. It's only my second day here and I've already fallen in love with London so deeply. It is now my number one favorite city in the West. Finally, we are having dinner at Vantra, a fully vegan, gluten-free restaurant serving nutritious plant-based food from raw to cooked. Wow. The noodle is a bit too soft for me. How's the flavor though? Flavor is good. But not spicy. <laughs> Even the desserts are refined sugar free. No sugar? Huh. After dinner, we continue our stroll around Regent Street, Soho, and Chinatown. Stay tuned as we'll be exploring some of the markets we passed by briefly in the next couple of vlogs. This is a real local place, I don't have any tourists. Yeah. Such as Kingly Court, a colorful hidden courtyard nestled in Carnaby. It is a culinary hotspot. With all these markets offering diverse multicultural food, London truly feels like a foodie paradise. Honestly, I can't fathom why some of my friends who visited here lied to me, claiming the food wasn't good. Some even told me London is boring, yet I'm literally having the best time of my life here. Anyway, we cover almost 40k steps again on our second day. The following morning, not feeling too well, I venture out for brunch solo. So I ordered this blue matcha bowl because of the name, but it isn't blue at all. Although it tastes refreshing, it lacks the earthy flavor of matcha. It still leaves me hungry, so I opt for another restaurant to have a more satisfying meal. This is the Benedict with sesame cube tofu and a surprisingly large sweet potato side dish. All the dishes here are either vegan or can be made vegan. I kinda regret ordering the side dish because the Benedict alone is super filling. I am stuffed. Shortly after, I joined John and Chris for a bougie afternoon tea at Café Royale, a reservation they made a month in advance. Café Royale holds historical significance as a meeting place for prominent figures, including the poet Oscar Wilde. Today, it stands as a luxury hotel and dining establishment preserving its cultural legacy. The interior is absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Wow, so flavorful. Mm. 
Everything here is refillable. I love it. <laughs> okay, good. After savoring almost three hours of afternoon tea, we check out Fortnum Mason, where the royal family shop at. Wow. Oh, this is a very sophisticated five-story shop selling high-quality teas, housewares, and fresh products. It's fun to look at these up after having afternoon tea. It's the perfect place to find fancy souvenirs. Anyway, please stay tuned for a future vlog where I'll be trying out their afternoon tea. So that wraps up my second and third day in London. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you!